Hi and welcome to this lesson on calculating the enthalpy change of solution. In the previous lesson, we had a look at the definition of the enthalpy change of solution. So it's when one mole of a compound dissolves in sufficient water to form an infinitely dilute solution. And we also learned that the more soluble the compound is, the more negative the value of the enthalpy change of solution or the more exothermic that value is. So in this lesson, we're going to learn to actually do the calculations. Here we've got an energy cycle and using this energy cycle, we can work out an unknown route. So we can, we can use two known routes to calculate the unknown route on the top. And this will look very similar to a Hess cycle, but it's more similar to a born harbour cycle, really. But the principles are the same and Hess's law is obviously being applied here. When calculating these kind of cycles, I like to establish where the start and the end of the cycle is. So the start is where I've got two arrows pointing away. And the end is where I've got a compound that's got two arrows pointing to it in the route. So here's my end. And I can see that I've got a very direct route there to calculate the enthalpy change of solution from the start to the end. I can just take root delta H Z or the enthalpy change of solution. I'm just using these symbols that they've outlined here. Or I can take an, a long route. Remember Hess's law? The overall enthalpy change is the same, independent of the route taken. So to get from the start to the end, I can take the shortcut or I can take the long route. So I can say the enthalpy change of Z is equal to the enthalpy change of HX, this one here, plus the enthalpy change of HY, this one here. So you can see, if I add those two together, the overall enthalpy change will be the same. And you can see from the cycle, this involves breaking an ionic lattice up to give the gaseous ions and then dissolving those gaseous ions in a large amount of water because we've got plus AQ, of course. And these two routes, we can work out the unknown indirectly. So I've summarised at the top here, the enthalpy change of solution, or delta H said as we've kind of abbreviated it here, is equal to the lattice dissociation enthalpy plus the sum of the hydration enthalpies of both of the gaseous ions. Let's put the numbers in then. So we can see I've again abbreviated it here. So what I'm saying is delta HZ is equal to plus 787 plus minus 364 plus minus 406. And I don't need to double any of those values because they're all in their one molar quantity. So they're all fitting with my definition. So if I add all those together, I get my direct route here, my enthalpy change of solution, my quick route, and it is plus 17 kilojoules per mole. You must remember to add the enthalpy values for the hydration of both of your ions. Don't just do one of them.